What's going on everybody? How about you? Truck and Rob coming at you. It's been a little while since I uh, put out a video. Took me a little vacation from uh, videos and doing all that sort of stuff. Hey, everybody needs to take a break every now and then, right? But uh, been talking about it and it's time to do it. So uh, made up a list um, for those of you guys that are following me on Facebook. Uh, a little while ago I put a question on there for you guys to I threw up a little list uh, it was much smaller than this one but uh, for everybody to go on there and comment of everything that they think that you should have on the truck during winter okay um, it was everything from the basics all the way up to some crazy stuff we'll get into that but this video is going to cover just about everything that we, and I mean we, by the collective uh, truck drivers out here, we have combined a list, and I have put it together for everything that you should or might want to have to survive winter in a truck. Um, basically, stuff like if you're going to be shut down. Uh, if the highway's shut down, uh, bad accident, something like that, you're in freezing temperatures and you have to survive, okay? Um, it's going to be a lot of that on the list, all right? And just kind of some good stuff to have, some good habits to do um, to make sure that you survive winter, all right? So uh, I'm going to break it down. Like here, I got a list, all right? Okay, it's going to be kind of a little bit of a long video, and uh, I apologize, I usually don't do very long videos, but this one should be pretty good, and I'm going to put it up on YouTube and everywhere, and it's be there for, uh, for the whole world to see. So, if you know anybody that needs help just getting started in trucking, and uh, they're asking you, you know, what should I have on the truck for winter, here you go, here's the video, send them a link. Um, Alright, so I kind of broke it down into two sections of just your basic survival stuff and then kind of the more advanced stuff. Um, now if you get everything on this list, holy crap, you're gonna need like another trailer or something because there's a lot of stuff on this list. Um, so do you need absolutely everything on this list and I'm gonna read off to you? No, um, you do need some things. Uh, I'll leave it up to you to kind of pick and choose uh, what you think that you might need out here, you know, um, so go ahead and grab a, a piece of paper, pencil, pen, crayon, scented marker, whatever you guys write with out there, um, and uh, write this down, and y'all can pick, pick and choose what you want. All right, so obviously you want to have uh, your bunk heater, if your truck has a bunk heater, uh, Wabasto, uh, S-Bar bunk heater, uh, you want to get that tuned up and uh, get it in the shop if you have to. Uh, they're pretty simple. I, when I got this truck, it was not functioning at all. I uh, pretty much had to do a complete rebuild on it, uh, put a new fuel pump, uh, replace some fuel lines. It wasn't a big deal. You buy the parts. Uh, it's a pretty simple, uh, simple thing. There's lots of YouTube videos out there on how to rebuild these things. Parts are available fairly cheap okay uh, for your company drivers make sure your company does it for you all right but for the owner ops lease guys that are paying the shop bills it's not that hard it's a pretty simple thing so anyway uh, bunk heater make sure your bunk heater is good um, anti-gel uh, obviously you want to have some anti-gel um, I'm not really going to get into temperatures with anti-gel um, what I generally do when I put anti-gel in the tanks, it's got to be damn cold uh, because all the filling stations uh, across America, come wintertime, they start treating their fuel. All right. Um, usually anything below about 20, 15, 20 in the teens somewhere is when I'll start thinking about maybe putting a little bit of anti-gel uh, in the tank. Uh, obviously when it's colder than that, you definitely want to start thinking about it or 
if you're going to be parking the truck that's where it comes into play the most is when you're going to be parking the truck uh, or for you reefer guys that are going to be dropping trailers and the reefer unit is not going to be running if it's just sitting there fuel in a tank that's when it's more likely to gel up okay when it's not circulating through the engine because it runs through the engine it heats up and it kicks some back in the tank um, or sometimes uh, there's a, a fuel heater uh, in the tank itself more more often yeah, there's usually a heater in the tank but uh, you know back on point uh, the anti gels is very important for if you're going to be parked um, uh, okay so anti gel uh, not going to get into brands really uh, I like using this stuff I'm not sponsored by them this is not a sponsored video but uh, I like using this stuff here the FPPF fuel power um, most truck stops small bottle uh, let's see it treats up to 240 gallons I believe treats up to 240 gallons this little bitty bottle will do up to 240 gallons um, does pretty good this stuff's real good uh, I run this actually year-round I'll run a whole bottle uh, through this about once a month and uh, you know pick one up next time you're at the truck stop pick up the bottle and read the back I'm not going to go into details on this with you on the video check it out do your own research uh, a lot of guys I know run this FPPF fuel power um, it's good anti-gel and it's just good for your fuel period uh, power service the white bottle uh, is my second choice for actual real anti-gel and then uh, the uh, diesel 911 in the red bottle I always carry a bottle of that luckily I've never had to use it um, it is exactly what it says it does it's 911 it's a damn emergency uh, you don't want to be running that stuff through your tanks on a regular basis it's not good for the system it's an emergency type deal okay um, basically once you're already gelled up that's when you would use that you got to take your fuel filters apart um, go through them uh, fuel filters is on the list uh, take your fuel filters apart dump this 911 in there it's it's kind of a process uh, maybe somebody else has done it and can kind of uh, tell their story on how to do that but there's instructions on the bottle and there's videos out there on how to use the 911 but it's just that it's 911 it's an emergency it's when you're already gelled up so again do not use the diesel 911 just as your regular anti-gel okay all right uh, extra fuel on board duh uh, you know don't be running around these uh, hairy states and hairy roads where you know there's a possibility of some bad stuff going on on empty tanks of fuel quarter tank half tank if you know you're going to be getting into some shit stop and get fuel fill up the tanks all right for idling purposes and for the extra weight you want as much weight on your drives as possible so extra fuel uh, obviously tire chains um, depending on where you run uh, check your state laws on what chains they require what axles they require you to run chains on uh, do your research be a big boy and uh, look on what kind of tire chains you need to run and where you need to run them I'm not going to get into that on this this is just a list video of what you need um, extra food uh, non-perishables uh, stuff like soup um, peanut butter and crackers um, stuff that's not going to go bad uh, a lot of us have refrigerators freezers I've got a real refrigerator I've got a standalone freezer but what happens worst case scenario um, you get in an accident whatever uh, worst case scenario the truck doesn't run you don't have any power to run the refrigerator and the freezer your foods gonna go bad well I guess you could put it outside or something if it's that cold right but uh, you know what I'm saying here you know you want non perishables stuff that isn't gonna go bad the list is long on those kind of things um, let's see water obviously you're gonna need water a gallon pick up a couple gallons of water a case of water bottle something extra water um, for your non-perishables like like soup and stuff like that 
a can opener. How are you going to eat the can of soup if you don't have a can opener or be smart enough to open a can? And you'd be surprised, all right? So pick up a little can opener, uh, anything will work. Um, as far as cans of soup, uh, I like using my little lunchbox cooker here, this little thing here, and uh, throw your can of soup in there. Look at that. I got a can. What do we got in here? We oh got, mmm, chunky. Uh, grilled chicken sausage gumbo. Mmm. But uh, yeah, I'll just throw that in there, lock it up, and plug the sucker in, you know. Um, let that sucker roll around about 20 minutes, half hour, and you got your hot can of soup. Um, let's see here. Lunchbox cooker, soup, uh, warm clothes, obviously. Yeah, I wrote it down, you know. Uh, long john, socks, jacket, uh, beanie. Uh, get yourself a nice warm hat, something to uh, to keep you warm, you know. Here you go. This is a, a little extreme, but it's authentic. So, uh, uh, winter gloves, hand warmers, uh, those little uh, little warming packs, you can stuff them in your gloves. Those are pretty nice to have. And that thing's hot. Woo. It's a real rabbit fur. Authentic from Russia. Mm. Uh, okay, winter gloves, hand warmers, uh, mud boots. I keep a set of mud boots on my truck year round. Um, Walmart, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, something like that. They're pretty cheap. Uh, good thing to have. Uh, poncho, rain suit, also keep that year round. Blankets, uh, sleeping bag, some kind of emergency blanket, you know, those tin foil uh, looking blankets, those emergency blankets. Uh, they don't eat much on the truck. <laughs> they don't. They don't. They don't take up too much space. They fold up into a little pack. You know. Um, get you a couple of those. This is emergency stuff. You know. Um, if you're a smoker, a dipper, or a vape, grab some smokes. Pick up a carton of smokes. Pick up a roll of dip. Get your vape supplies, all your juices, all that sort of stuff. Carry some of that extra in the truck. Um, something to potty in hey it was on the list you know a bucket um, you're stuck on the side of the road somewhere what are you gonna do you know um, something to, something to go potty in that can be a camping toilet um, hell just a bucket with the pool noodle cut on the top you know uh, anything you know uh, candles uh, sterno cans if you don't know what sterno cans are uh, google it s-t-e-r-n-o um, basically uh, denatured alcohol uh, lamp, kind of, not a lamp, but a, it's a little can and you light it on fire and uh, it's pretty safe to use inside. Might crack a window though, you know. Uh, and a coffee can to put that sternal can in. Uh, everybody, everybody laughed and had fun with the next one that I put on the list myself, which is lotion and chapstick. Hey, in the winter time, I don't know about you, but my hands get kind of dry and uh, you know a little bit of lotion helps out a lot but that that was a funny uh, funny thing to watch all the comments roll through on lotion yep just lotion you know your hands get all cracked up some kind of hand cream how about that and uh, you can use it wherever else you want all right uh, that's pretty much the basics that was the left side hope you guys uh, wrote all that down and it uh, wasn't too hard to follow uh, I'm trying to have some fun here with it and, uh, uh, we'll get into what I call, I, I rewrote this list about five times to kind of organize it a little bit because it was nuts. But uh, I'll get into the more advanced list, quote unquote. Um, Y'all might need some of this stuff, write it down anyway. Um, ice cleats, those little uh, uh, slip on, they just slip over your boots or your shoes. Uh, and the little ice cleats from keep you from falling and busting your ass on the ice. Uh, those are pretty nice to have. Uh, some ice melt, uh, you know, salt, basically, or uh, cat litter, something that, that can melt ice um, that you can throw down on the ground if you get stuck somewhere. A uh, shovel and a broom, for us flatbedders especially, a uh, shovel and a broom. Uh, you sit in a weekend, over the weekend or something, you got a foot of snow on the deck, you gotta get it off of there before you go get loaded. So shovel and a broom, uh, the shovel, can be good for all truck drivers, doesn't matter, reefer tank or whatever, uh, to help get you out of 
get you unstuck from somewhere. A shovel and some cat litter and some of that ice melt. And uh, I've gotten out of some sticky situations, even just in a parking lot, uh, to where the parking lot has iced over. Um, throw some ice melt down and kind of bust at it with the shovel and boom, you're gone. Been there, done that. Um, I'm a stickler for Rain-X. Um, I use Rain-X a lot and uh, it's under the bed. Um, I use Rain-X religiously on all my glass mirrors, headlights even. Um, it helps out a lot. So take the time, clean your windows, throw some Rain-X on there. Uh, extra set of wiper blades. Uh, win winter wi winter washer fluid obviously you want some winterized washer fluid something that's going to be good down below freezing um, next thing on the list I'm gonna get to that is rubbing alcohol uh, uh, old school trick eh, not old school it's just a trick uh, if you don't have the winterized washing fluid uh, you can dump a bottle of rubbing alcohol with the high percent. When you go to Walmart, Walgreens, wherever you're going to get your rubbing alcohol, get the highest percent possible. I don't know the numbers, some of it's 70, 80, 90, 92 uh, percent. Get the highest percent possible. That means it has the least amount of water. Okay, and water does what? Water freezes. So you want the highest percent of uh, rubbing alcohol. Uh, you can dump that in your washer fluid. And uh, hell, you can unfreeze your brakes. Um, rubbing alcohol has a lot of uses on the truck uh, in the winter time. Uh, dump some in your in your air uh, desiccant air uh, air dryer um, that'll unfreeze your airlines, all that sort of stuff. Has a lot of uses. Uh, a hammer and some tools. Uh, the hammer would be for breaking ice. And uh, for knocking your brake drums loose, stuff like that, if your brakes freeze up while you're parked. Um, i tell you a trick on that. For brakes freezing up, happens a lot. Don't set your brakes. Don't set your trailer brakes when you park for the night. Um, trailer brakes is the biggest thing that'll lock up on you. And uh, if you don't set them, they're not going to lock up on you. Uh, now, an old school trick is to not set your brakes at all, even the tractor. How about that? What they would do, they would carry rocks, bricks, wheel chocks. They would chalk their wheels. Back in the old days, some people still do it. Chalk your wheels and park. That way, none of your brakes are set, okay? Do I recommend doing that nowadays? If you're smart and, and are responsible enough, and you're in a cold enough situation, sure, go ahead and do it. Don't set your brakes, chalk your wheels. Um, that's what they did in the old days. Truck and Rob will not be responsible for it if anything happens, though. It's just an idea, guys. It's what the old guys, the old timers used to do. Your brakes won't freeze up if they're not set. Uh, all right, so hammer, tools. You should have tools on the truck all year round, okay? Um, gets kind of frustrating going to the TA or the Petro to uh, get something done on the truck that's important that you don't know how to do and I know everybody's had this problem you're waiting in line waiting to get in the shop because this guy in front of you needs a mud flap put on or to change a headlight bulb well you got some got an important issue you got a a bad tire or a axle seal that, that went out on you, something important that needs to get done. But you gotta wait for an hour and a half to get in the shop because the two drivers, one driver needs a mud flap put on and the other one needs a headlight bulb. And they're priority because they were there before you. Just carry some tools, guys. It's it's the, a mud flap, it's four nuts and bolts. Come on, you know, a pair of pliers, vice grips, whatever, crescent wrench carry some tools all year round all right uh, fuel filters getting back into that gelling up and getting some bad fuel getting water in your fuel um, winter time we get a lot of additives in the fuel like I said before 
um, a big thing that builds up in the fuel filters is asphaltine. A-S-P-H-A-L-T-I-N-E, asphaltine. A key word is asphalt, all right? Uh, it's basically tar that uh, that's builds up in your fuel filters and it'll plug it up, all right? Um, so you're gonna have to, uh, it's a good idea to carry some extra fuel filters for the truck. If you have an APU, carry a fuel filter for the APU. And for you reefer guys, get a uh, fuel filter for your reefer, all right? Uh, now, if anybody stood out at the truck while you're having your PM service done, as they change your fuel filters, you're going to know that they dump a little bit of diesel in there. You know, they drain it out. Ah. And they put their new fuel filters on there. And then you got to fill up that bowl with diesel. So carry about a gallon of diesel. If you plan on getting into doing the fuel filters, um, just carrying the fuel filter alone isn't going to help you a whole lot. You got to have some extra diesel on board. Just a small little gallon jug would be fine get your fuel filter swapped out. It's going to save you a lot of money and a lot of downtime if you can just swap a fuel filter out real quick yourself. Okay, a uh, gallon of diesel, uh, the tools and the knowledge to change those filters. Uh, some of the filters need special spanner wrenches, like a big uh, wrench with, with little cleats on it around. Um, some fuel filters have di need different tools. They're cheap, guys. Um, especially the lease guys, um, more especially the owner ops or somebody that's even making payments on the truck, whatever, what have you. Um, you guys should have those tools. It's your truck. You're buying the truck. You've invested in the truck. Buy the specific tools that you need to fix small bullshit on your truck. You know, something as simple as a fuel filter wrench. 20 bucks, 30 bucks. You don't have it forever. It'll last you forever. Okay but you got it. Tools and the knowledge to change filters. There you go. Um, as far as the knowledge, ask somebody, talk to somebody. Next time you're at the shop, uh, instead of going in the, the uh, driver's lounge and sitting there playing with your phone, ask if you can watch, you know? Watch them how, how do you change this fuel filter, boss? You mind if I watch it? Watch how to do it. Ask somebody, watch a video. All right, one of my big ones is a CB radio. Very, very important to me. I don't know, I, I love it. I feel absolutely naked without it. I feel like that little guy dangle in there, naked, without this thing. I've even got a backup under my bed in case this one goes out, okay? Get those weather reports, all right? Don't rely, I'm filming this with my phone, but uh, don't rely on any kind of app or anything like that to tell you what's out there, out the windshield, okay? This will let you know what's going on out there, all right? Everybody says, oh, CB's dead, radio's dead. Well, you not running the radio and not getting on there talking to anybody are the ones that are making it dead. Go buy a radio support your local CB shops, get one from the damn CB shop. Don't buy one from these multi-billion dollar truck stops. Go help the little guys. Um, I don't want to get into a whole big thing on the CB radio, but you know what, I'm going to do a whole separate video on that. There you go. Um, get your CB radio. Talk on it. Use it. Listen. Somebody's on there saying, ah, shut up, stupid, and all that stuff. It's got an off knob. You know, you can turn it down or you can squelch them out, read the directions on how to use it to where you can adjust it to where you won't hear the guys with the big, uh, the big radios uh, hitting you 10 miles away. You can be just uh, tuned in on about a mile or two ahead of you. Read up on it, do some research. Uh, propane torch, moving on. I don't wanna uh, drag on certain subjects here. We're getting on the list. Yeah, we're getting into 25 minutes long. Golly. Uh, propane torch. Just a little propane torch. Uh, back to the freezing brakes. The brakes freezing up on you. Uh, heat them up with a torch. Carefully. Don't light anything on fire. Use your better judgment. Be careful with the torch. Be careful with storing the torch on the truck. Make sure it's in a secure location. 
Uh, heat them up with the torch and bang them with the hammer, gently. Uh, now we're getting into uh, yeah, a little bit more advanced, I guess. Well, no, not really. None of this is all advanced. Uh, some spare air hoses, all right, for your trailer, uh, for uh, the tractor to the trailer. Your damn air hoses. Um, when it gets cold, especially those curly Q ones, the red and the blue curly Q ones. Uh, after about a year, two years, they're it's it's about time to replace them anyway. Um, I know how it goes out here, you know, replace it when it breaks, but um, at least carry one spare with you, at least one, ultimately two, a red and a blue. Uh, if you've got the rubber hoses, great. Um, even if you do have the rubber hoses, it's not a bad idea to carry at least one uh, spare old school curly Q hose, one of them coil hoses. Uh, and it doesn't matter what color it is. Pick one, pick a color. Doesn't matter. Um, they're both the same, and it'll get you out of a situation. It doesn't matter if it's red or if it's blue. It does the same job. You can replace a red hose with a blue hose, and it will work just the same. It's just a different color. And you, the professional truck driver, have to know which hose is which. <laughs> All right. Label them. Get some duct tape or something if you have to. And, right on there red something all right so but the point is get it carry at least one spare air hose all right um and a pigtail wouldn't help either always carry a spare pigtail with you the green the green electrical curly cord okay uh spare air hoses uh desiccant air filter if your truck has it most of them do uh most people don't even know what or where it is um it's on your air dryer um, it's usually located to where that psh sound comes from, you know, every now and then your truck goes psh. It's usually right around that noise. So it's usually like, it, <laughs> it looks like a big, uh, big oil filter type thing. Uh, you twist it on uh, from the factory. They put them things on there damn tight. Uh, so you're going to want to have tools. Uh, usually a, a strap wrench uh, does the job on that. Um, I've had luck even uh, in a pinch taking them off with a small ratchet strap, uh, get the job done. Worst case scenario, do the old school stab a screwdriver through it and twist it off that way. Um, but get the right tool for the job. Get you a nice strap wrench, a strap wrench and uh, it'll take off your air filter pretty easy. Uh, it's good to carry one of those in case it gets clogged up. You get some water in your air lines and everything gets frozen up on you. You can change it out. Dump some rubbing alcohol in there. Uh, at the truck truck stops, they sell airline de-icer. Hmm, maybe you should buy a bottle of that just in case, and figure out. You know, that's that would be a good place to put it. Is in your uh, desiccant air filter, and get everything de-iced. But that's emergency stuff, right? Uh, air de ice, yeah, airline de icer. There you go. That was the last thing on the list. Uh, now we're getting to the funny stuff. That's pretty much the basics. Um, feel free to add anything else that you might need on there. And again, if you ha carry all this stuff, that's a lot of stuff, guys. It really is. It's a lot of stuff. Um, you might need an extra trailer for it. Who knows? But pick and choose. Um, of what you want go ahead and rewind the video whatever I know I kind of skipped around a little bit but I did read everything on the list and this was a cumula cumulative list of a bunch of truck drivers that commented on my Facebook post so this is not just my list that truck and Rob says oh this is stuff you gotta have no you guys commented on it too so this is truck the list from truck drivers period all I did was put it together all right uh, now, here's the funny stuff. Uh, one dude commented, my buddy Shannon, uh, he said, Hannibal Lecter's cookbook. How about that? For when shit really hits the fan and you're totally screwed, you need Hannibal Lecter's cookbook. Uh, one dude said, a lot lizard. Hey, man, it'll keep you warm, I guess. Might keep you warm all year. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> and some warming lube. And the reason for that is to take the winter rates and the winter freight. How about you? All right, guys, hope that helped out. Uh, I feel good getting in front of the camera again. Uh, it's been a little while, but I'm back. We'll start kicking out some more videos for you. Uh, that's the list. 
pick and choose what you need off of it, but get some of it. Um, you know, I hear a lot of times it's here on Facebook about people that are shut down uh, Wyoming, uh, all the bad areas. They were shut down for three days and they were starving and didn't have anything to eat and, and didn't have any water and ran out of smokes and all oh, it was miserable. Well, think about it. Think ahead. Plan ahead. You know, you know damn well that if you're going through Wyoming, there's a good possibility that something bad's going to happen and you're going to get stuck. All right, Wyoming's one of them places where you can see all four seasons. You can it can be raining uh, up over one mountain, and you come down at the bottom and it's a blizzard, and then you come up and the sun's shining, and birds are out chirping and everything, and then the next it's crazy, you know. So be prepared. Check your weather reports. Uh, carry extra fuel go through that list be smart out here guys all right I'm tired of hearing on Facebook that oh, I didn't have any food well why why I understand maybe if you're just getting started out in trucking and uh, money is an issue I get that I really do um, but that's where us experienced drivers that are stocked up if you know that that's the situation that hey this driver's in a bad spot Give them some food. Give them a pack of smokes. I've given plenty of packs of smokes out through the winter of people that are just down and out. All right, sitting on the side of the road, they ain't got no smokes. You know, here, here's some water and some smokes and a can of soup, buddy. You know, you got a blanket or anything like that? I give them a blanket. Um, you know, I mean, be that guy. Be that guy that makes a difference out here for us. All right, be a professional truck driver. Um, hell, not too long ago. Uh, what was it last year or the year before that when Atlanta was shut down that's right Atlanta Georgia was shut down due to ice there were people in four-wheelers that were getting in the big trucks to stay warm because they weren't prepared all right the truck drivers were prepared we had blankets and heat uh, bunk heaters APUs food uh, cooking meals for them they're chilling in the trucks eating food and watching TV while it was just it was shut down outside so be that guy. Be that hero. We can be heroes again, guys. Just got to be smart. All right. I'm going to stop yakking at you. You know what I always say. Be a professional. Set the example. I mean it. Do it. All right, guys. I'll talk to you.